300 dead troops and well over 10,000 wounded. And the surgical center here in Fallujah is a place where they see trauma literally by the hour. We were there yesterday when we were literally standing by and nothing was happening inside of this hospital center. And in an instant, the doors fly open, in comes a patient. Only this patient turned out to be a suspected Iraqi insurgent who had been shot twice on the perimeter here in Camp Fallujah. Apparently, this is something that happens much more often than anyone would imagine when Iraqi insurgents and foreign fighters are treated and cared for by the U.S. doctors working on the ground here. It is impressive work. We got to see it first and again, as I mentioned yesterday, and the commander of that unit is Maureen Pennington. She's my guest now here live in Camp Fallujah. First of all, the patient, how is he after being airlifted at Baghdad? Um, he's stable. He's doing fine. How often is it that you now see Iraqi insurgents and foreign fighters that you treat here? Frequently. It's, it's on a weekly basis. We had quite a moment yesterday, uh, not only when we were watching the operation take place as you stabilize that man in front of us, literally, but you relayed a story to us that struck me and will stay with me for a very long time. Recently, two U.S. Marines who had been severely wounded in combat, laying on the operating table, separate ones, and talking back and forth between each other. What was so memorable about that for you? I think what's is seeing firsthand the devotion that the Marines have for one another in their units. They can be severely injured, um, but they still take care of one another. It is something that will I will take from me always from this mission. I thought the other thing that was quite critical in you relaying that story is that these Marines, when they have wounded comrades, will follow them into the operating room and rarely leave their side. Right. We don't allow them in the operating room. That is something that we don't allow. But they will stay there, get updates. We're very um, concerned about giving them updates so they know exactly what's going on with their fellow Marine. Very, very important. Lately, you're seeing more burn injuries. Apparently, these explosive devices are packing much more fuel. Uh, you're seeing more bullet injuries, too, because the snipers apparently are getting better as well. And the other issue that you relate to us is that the body armor you believe is so effective on behalf of the U.S. military. As a result, you do not see so many body injuries. It's more head injuries. Right. We do see, since we have up-armored the vehicle so well and our body armor with the side sappy plates and everything has gotten so much better, we are seeing more injuries to extremities, um, to the head and neck. Those are vulnerable areas right now. You have a very difficult job in dealing with this on a daily basis. How do you do it? Um, what I do is I look to my team. I mean, I have three teams. I have a team here in Fallujah, Takatum, and Ramadi, and I watch that team work. They grow. Every patient that comes through those doors, they just give 110% for those patients. That's what gets us through. You are, be to commend, uh, you are to be commended, I should say, and the rest of your team as well. It was impressive meeting you. My best to you, okay? You Out of San Diego, California. You're